Welcome to my channel Medicosis Perfectionalis. In the previous videos in my series on hematology, we have discussed methemoglobinemia and cyanide poisoning. Today let's talk about carbon monoxide poisoning, the silent killer. When you are cherry red, you are indeed dead. So let's get started. Henry Ford, poor and uneducated, dreamed of a horseless carriage, went to work with what tools he possessed without waiting for opportunity to favor him, and now evidence of his dream belts the entire earth. Horseless carriage. You're driving a horseless carriage. Henry Ford succeeded, and he said, I'll build a car for the great multitude. It will be large enough for the family, but small enough for the individual to run and care for. It will be low in price, that no man making a good salary will be unable to own one and enjoy with his family the blessing of hours of pleasure in God's great open spaces. Henry Ford. And this is his Model T, the world's ugliest car, but it was the most affordable back then. And when he first tried it in Detroit, people said, ah, nobody will pay for such an interruption. Carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas. There are three types of poisonous gases. Number one, toxic pulmonary irritant. They just irritate the mucosa. Number two, simple asphyxiant. They displace oxygen from the atmospheric air. Number three, chemical asphyxiants. They inhibit the mitochondrial cellular respiration by interfering with the electron transport chain. Examples, cyanide. Carbon monoxide leading to carboxyhemoglobin. By the way, there is a difference between carboxyhemoglobin due to carbon monoxide and carbamino hemoglobin due to carbon dioxide. Huge difference. Carbamino is normal, carboxy is not normal. The third one is hydrogen sulfide leading to sulfhemoglobinemia when your blood turns green. Now, physics and chemistry time. What's the difference between complete combustion and incomplete combustion of hydrocarbons? Complete combustion, you have lots of oxygen. So carbon, anything in organic chemistry is probably carbon plus oxygen. Now you have carbon monoxide. But since oxygen is abundant, now we have carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is not toxic. If you think carbon dioxide is toxic, there's something wrong with you. Remember photosynthesis process in fifth grade? Yeah, plants need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis process to occur, which is the source of life. Carbon dioxide will lead to carbaminohemoglobin. It's normal, of course, within limits. Incomplete combustion of hydrocarbons, oxygen is less abundant. We ran out of oxygen and we're stuck here at the carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is toxic. It's a chemical asphyxiant. It causes carboxyhemoglobin to form, and this is almost always abnormal. Why almost? Because there is an exception. Sometimes carbon monoxide is normal, and I'll let you know when. In your car, you have two things, the internal combustion engine and an air filter. Because as you know, oxygen aids in burning, but it doesn't burn by itself. So we need oxygen. That's what the air filter is for. It blows air, which contains oxygen, which helps burning gasoline in the internal combustion engine. Now we have CO2 if oxygen is abundant. But if you ran out of oxygen, if you are like in a closed garage or something like this, carbon monoxide is gonna form. Both of which will go out in the exhaust system. What are the causes of carbon monoxide poisoning? The most common cause is fires. Fire is the most common cause of cyanide poisoning and carbon mon monoxide poisoning. Also, the heaters, the firesides that use actual fire, because some, like nowadays, oh, like these terrible days, those are not real fires anymore, some of them. Clogged vents change the freaking filter. Stoves, mufflers when they are obstructed if you like put a potato in a muffler you're gonna kill the driver okay it's a very old trick but it doesn't work anymore cars have figured it out and now they add two mufflers so if you block one the other one is gonna work and the the worst thing that could happen is 
Um, you cannot start the car. I think that's about it. But to kill a driver actually by putting a potato is a little bit of a stretch. But it's possible. And don't forget, barbecue. So, a classic question on your exam. You have a family, they had a nice barbecue, everyone was nice and happy. Then all of them, like the entire family, went to the emergency department because all of them suddenly, for some reason, they have headache. What's the diagnosis? Carbon monoxide poisoning until proven otherwise. What's the treatment? Give them oxygen without waiting for the stupid lab. And here is a classic story. It's a historic story. It doesn't work anymore and I'll tell you why, but let me tell you the story. This nice 15 year old boy, now he's gonna drive. He wanna drive his dad's car. So he stole his car keys and then went to the garage, locked the doors of the garage so that his father doesn't discover it and went to the car, started the ignition. The car is running, but since it was 3 a.m., okay, until his father was asleep, he felt asleep because he was so tired. But the car's windows are open. So the car first is gonna burn oxygen, complete combustion. Until you run out of oxygen because he closed the freaking door and now carbon monoxide is gonna be produced. Since this car's windows are open or it doesn't have any windows, uh, now carbon monoxide is gonna go into this kid's system. He'll have headache, but he is sleeping. And by the way, um, carbon monoxide doesn't change the PaO2, so it doesn't stimulate the respiratory center in your brain, so you won't feel, you won't wake up, you won't do anything, you'll just die in peace. That's why it's a silent killer. And this dad's like Model T is just amazing. These kids are spoiled. Like today I drive a beater. When I put new tires on my car, I double its value. Now, why is this story historic and doesn't work anymore? Because now since 1975, we have catalytic converters in the car. Something most of your professors haven't heard of. Why is carbon monoxide poisonous? Two reasons. Number one, it forms deshemoglobin. This means difficulty or a problem. There's a problem with this hemoglobin. That's why we call it carboxyhemoglobin. And number two, inhibiting the cellular respiration in the famous electron transport chain. Let's talk about the second one first. Let's first talk about normal glucose glycolysis producing in ADH, then pyruvate to the TCA cycle, also known as Krebs cycle, and ADH and FADH2. Guess what complex one is? It's NADH, complex two, FADH2. So we need both. They keep pumping protons here until the, la the concentration of protons in the intermembrane space is larger than the ma matrix, and now protons are being pushed inward. We need this to convert ADP into ATP. One of these complexes is complex 4, containing cytochrome C oxidase. It forms water from oxygen. And carbon monoxide, as we will discover, is gonna inhibit this. I've just told you the mechanism of carbon monoxide, it inhibits the cytochrome C oxidase. Complex 4 is now gone. Forget it. We have three things that inhibit this complex. Carbon monoxide, cyanide, and hydrogen sulfide. This leads to carbon monoxide poisoning, carboxy hemoglobin. This will lead to cyanide poisoning, cyano methemoglobin if you have methemoglobin. And hydrogen sulfide is going to lead to sulf hemoglobinemia. Normally, you breathe in air FiO2, lungs P big AO2, arterial blood PaO2, on the hemoglobin SaO2, oxygen in the tissue, carbon dioxide is produced on the hemoglobin, carbamino hemoglobin, and this is oxyhemoglobin. Then on the venous blood, lungs, carbon dioxide, breathe out. The process of the oxygen jumping onto the hemoglobin is called loading. Oxygen leaving the hemoglobin and going to the tissue is called unloading. In carbon monoxide poisoning, we have competitive binding to heme because carbon monoxide loves hemoglobin more than oxygen does. So carbon monoxide is going to kick oxygen aside, okay, competitive inhibition, 
and it's gonna bind to him instead. This is called decreased loading. Less oxygen is being loaded onto the hemoglobin because now he has a competitor called carbon monoxide. Then carbon monoxide doesn't let the hemoglobin release its oxygen. So some of the oxygen was already there on the hemoglobin before the carbon monoxide comes. Even this oxygen is not gonna be released. This is called decreased unloading. By decreased unloading, we have decreased release of oxygen to tissue. This is called left shift of the oxygen binding curve or the oxygen dissociation curve. With the left shift, the tissue is left behind. What will happen to the FiO2 in case of CO poisoning? Normal. How about P big AO2? Normal. PaO2? Normal. SaO2 is decreased. The saturation is decreased because of competitive inhibition. So carbon monoxide decreases loading, decreases unloading. By decreasing unloading, this is decreasing the release of oxygen and shifting the curve to the left. Now when you shift the curve to the left, you do what? You increase the y-axis. And when you increase the y-axis, it means more oxygen is on the hemoglobin. That's how SaO2 is high, which means oxygen must be away from tissue. Shifting to the left decreases the release of oxygen from hemoglobin to the tissue. With left shift, the tissue is left behind. Okay, some students will ask, didn't you, didn't you just say that SaO2 is going to be low in cases of carbon monoxide poisoning? Yes. Right now we're talking about the curve, but since we have decreased loading, which the curve doesn't describe, you have less oxygen jumping on the hemoglobin, and this, of course, is going to decrease the SaO2. So what's the effect of carbon monoxide on this stuff? How about hemoglobin concentration? Normal. PaO2? Normal. SaO2? Decrease. So the oxygen content is going to decrease. Now, what stimulates your brain and your respiratory center to increase ventilation is the hypoxemia. But since in CO poisoning the PaO2 is normal, you're not gonna breathe more. You're not gonna hyperventilate. That's why the poor kid in his dad's car died without waking up. That's why CO is a silent killer. There is a difference between normal hemoglobin and this hemoglobin. Normal hemoglobin. Please calculate the oxygen saturation. You get the oxyhemoglobin at the top and the total on the bottom normally 97%. In case of carboxyhemoglobin, CO poisoning, the oxygen saturation is, let's say, 50%. Very fun. Normally, do we have carbon, carboxyhemoglobin in our blood? The answer is yes. It's 0 to 5%. How come? I'll let you know at the end of the video. And here's another proof that SaO2 decreases in cases of carbon monoxide poisoning. Pathophysiology. We have carbon monoxide leading to carboxyhemoglobin formation. This decreases oxygen loading, which decreases the SaO2. Decreases oxygen unloading, leading to left shift of the oxygen dissociation curve. This leads to tissue hypoxia, which will lead to increased APO. This is only on chronic poisoning, okay? In the case of the kid that died in the car, there is no way that APO is going to increase because we don't have time. The kid is dead in less than a day. So this is not gonna work. Okay, tissue hypoxia will lead to the mitochondria not receiving oxygen because of decreased unloading. Also, the mitochondria cannot utilize oxygen. Why not? Inhibition of cytochrome 4, the cytochrome oxidase. So from here and here, we have no ATP formation. Which organs are more affected? The organs that need oxygen most, brain and heart. No ATP formation, let's shift to the dreaded anaerobic glycolysis, giving us lactic acidosis. What type of metabolic acidosis is this? High anion gap metabolic acidosis. Now, since the mitochondria cannot utilize oxygen, no oxygen is going to go to the tissue. Also due to the left shift, no concentration gradients present between the hemoglobin and the tissue. Because now the mitochondria cannot use the oxygen, it's going to the vein. There is no concentration gradient from here to here. So the diffusion is going to stop. That's why you have more oxygen in the vein than normal. That's why you end up with a cherry red skin. It's a very rare sign, but it's very specific for CO poisoning. 
and as you know polycythemia could be relative and absolute absolute could be primary or secondary increase in epo and one of the causes was co poisoning by the way co poisoning can be chronic in case of cigarette smokers carbon monoxide will bind to one of three things or more hemoglobin myoglobin and complex 4 in the electron transport chain when it binds to myoglobin again less oxygen available for the muscles leading to destruction of the muscles rhabdomyolysis rhabdo is the muscle especially the skeletal part of the muscle so skeletal muscles rhabdomyo lysis destruction and it's atraumatic because most of the time rhabdomyolysis is because of injury accidents whatever but this is a traumatic rhabdomyolysis interesting you have told us that normally we can have a minute amount of carboxyhemoglobin in the blood absolutely why because the normal process of heme degradation as you know hemoglobin is heme and globin heme by the heme oxygenase will give us the ferrous and carbon monoxide that's why and then it's gonna turn into belly verdin, which is green and then to bilirubin which is yellow by the way in anatomy which is very interesting if you are dissecting a fresh cadaver the bile ducts and gallbladder will stain the intestines green so you can ask your anatomy professor or a professor assistant this question um, why are these intestines green while we are dissecting this if he said because bile contains bilirubin, you should request your money back. Because bilirubin is yellow, it's belly verdant. The answer is belly verdant. By the way, verd means green. And in means protein. And belly means bile. Interesting. Quiz time. Let's say that you have two patients. Patient A has hemolytic anemia and his oxyhemoglobin is 60% that of a normal person. Patient B has CO poisoning with oxyhemoglobin again of 60% that of normal. Everything else being equal, which patient will have a worse tissue hypoxia? Let me know the answer down below in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense. Did you know that now you can go to my Patreon page, click on video notes and choose hematology for example. You will see all of my hematology notes. There are like 150 of them. You can download them, print them, view them, do whatever you want. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis.